attention to watches and warnings. They mean that your location may experience hurricane or tropical storm force winds or life-threatening storm surge. When a hurricane comes, your house is in danger. But this house in Bay St. Louis is specially designed to be hurricane resistant. There's all kinds of just straps and more straps and bolts holding this house down to the foundation, holding the roof down to the top plate. Everything is just super reinforced. The exterior of the house is all two by six studs, not two by fours, little things like that. Despite its charming exterior, the blueprint of this house includes plenty of fortifications like the roof, which is rated for 200 mile per hour wind and for good reason. Obviously, there's Katrina, but before that, there was Camille. You know, and, and I'm, you know, I've, I've been around a few decades. Before Katrina, the, the benchmark hurricane, one of the, you know, the, one of the worst ever in U.S. history, was Camille. Category 5, direct hit, the eye passed right over this city here. Josh Morgerman has weathered even stronger storms than that intentionally. If you're like me, you may already be one of the millions watching his thrilling online videos. He's a hurricane chaser putting himself directly in the paths of major hurricanes. 2019, Dorian in the Bahamas. 2017, he rode out Maria in Puerto Rico. And in 2015, he was in Mexico when Patricia hit. I would say one of those most memorable ones for me was Super Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines. This was in 2013. It was what we would call a Category 5 hurricane. Came in with 190 mile an hour winds. Video of storms like Ike, Ida, Irma, and Isaac show Morgerman's no stranger to the Gulf Coast. And now he's our neighbor. And I thought, okay, Mississippi, it's like a midpoint in the USA's hurricane country. You know, I could get to South Texas, I could get to South Florida, I could get to North Carolina. So I, I found a little cottage in Bay St. Louis. And then what happened was I found I really loved living here. I love the coast, I'm a big convert. I think coastal Mississippi is like one of the best kept secrets in the United States. It's a great place to live. Deciding to build a home here means accepting the risk. First, there's the flood risk. That means building up high. Morgerman's property is at 19 feet elevation and the house is four feet above that. That's good for anything but a Katrina event. Now Katrina statistically, that's a that's a three to 500 year event. So I'm thinking even if I eat right and exercise, I'm probably not gonna be around for more than like 50 years more. So I'm thinking the probabilities are that the storm surge won't get to the house. As for the wind, he calls this the Fort Knox of resistance, starting at the top with the roof. It's made of metal panels and the screws are not exposed, they're underneath and that, um, that helps for a variety of reasons. Um, this is a kind of roof that I wanted after being in a Category 5 in the Bahamas. I was in Hurricane Dorian, sustained winds of 185 miles an hour and the houses that had this kind of roof, the roof stayed on and that stuck with me. The attic is foam insulated, which he says precludes the need for venting. Everything is sealed tight to keep the wind out. Outside, what looks like wood siding is actually fiber cement. This stuff doesn't mold, it doesn't rot. Termites hate it. It's impact resistant from flying debris, and it's just, it's like, it's like a coat of armor around the house. Like any home, Morgerman admits there are some weak spots. A window breaks, the wind gets in, and then you have a lot of destruction inside. He recommends upgrading to impact resistant windows and shutters that aren't just for decoration. They actually close and mm -hmm. bolt shut and they protect the house from flying debris and they protect these windows. So one thing is have some kind of either impact glass or a shutter system, something in place so that your windows are covered during a hurricane. While his neighbors hope this fortress is not put to the test anytime soon, Morgerman says when that day comes, the house is ready. In terms of wind, I'd ride out any hurricane in this house. This thing, you know, it looks kind of all charming and nice. This thing is a brick. After a storm, many people look for the Red Cross, but here in the South, these yellow signs serve as a beacon of relief. In fact, the former FEMA director even coined the term Waffle House Index because if one of these stores is closed after a storm, well, that's a bad sign. If they came to a Waffle House that was on a limited menu, you could see some debris and maybe some slight damage. That meant that the community probably mirrored that and that they were going to need some assistance, but that was not the dire spot. And if you came upon a Waffle House that was closed, well, that's where you started. Waffle House has more than 1,900 locations across the Southeast, many of them in the path of hurricanes and tornadoes. South Mississippi has 32 restaurants, mostly along the coast where the threat of devastation is the greatest. 
It's why Waffle House Corporate pours so much energy into making sure its stores are prepared when a warm meal and a sense of normalcy is needed the most. We start lining up things with our vendors in terms of large generators, where we might think we might need to place those. We meet with our food vendors to make sure that they understand the expectation in terms of getting food there. If we've got a pre-staged food, we'll do that as well. There are three things that are required in a crisis response that we have to be concerned with. It's people, power, and food. And the most important one is people. Our customers need a place to be able to charge their phones, to be able to get a hot meal, and if it's in Florida or someplace hot, Maybe get some air conditioning because ours is working. We've got it on a generator. Where does this sense of responsibility come from for Waffle House? You know, from a business point of view, it's not the greatest choice because it is very expensive to run an operation like this. Mm -hmm. But from a people point of view, it's the only choice. I remember in Hurricane Katrina that uh, we had to close over 105 restaurants and several of them were lost. Uh, because they were in areas that never came back. But we made a commitment that we would come back. We put up signs on our, our battered restaurants, some that were nothing but the foundation was left, that we'll be back, and we're back. Waffle House considers its restaurants ingrained in the communities, and that yellow sign, a symbol of hope, even when hope seems lost. Before hurricane season ramps up, Review your insurance policies, keep an updated list of your personal belongings, take video and pictures around your home, and if your home gets damaged after the storm, contact your insurance agent.